Okay, so we're going to talk about Android and Java frameworks to begin with here. I'll briefly explain what software frameworks are and describe how these frameworks are used in Android and Java. We've talked about a lot of the Java frameworks, so obviously the emphasis here is on the, the Android stuff. So what is a framework? A framework is an integrated set of components that collaborate to provide a reusable architecture for a family of related applications. And uh, you can kind of think about a framework as sort of modular housing, I suppose, or pieces where some of it comes pre-assembled and you just have to finish it off and customize it. Android and Java provide lots and lots and lots of frameworks. Android has a framework called the Activity Framework that manages all the lifecycle hook methods that are dispatched by the user interface thread when a user interacts with a given activity, which is the user-facing components in Android. And uh, we won't go through this in detail. We'll probably talk a bit more about this when we get back to the Android discussion after I cover this stuff. But basically, when your app starts to run, there's an activity, and it has lifecycle events that deal with whether the, whether the window is visible, whether it's coming into visibility, whether it's being paused, whether it's being resumed, whether it's being started, whether it's being stopped, whether it's being created, whether it's being destroyed, and so on and so forth. And these are all driven by callbacks on this activity object, and you fill in the blanks for the callbacks to do certain things. Another good example of framework is the framework that handle the GUI framework that waits for button clicks when you press a button, and then have listeners that are dispatched to handle whatever the click is supposed to do. So that's a good example of a framework. You've got this hook method that you fill in called onClick, and uh, that's what you provide when someone clicks. And obviously, you don't have to write all the code to sense the click and to, to run it through the window manager and handle the demultiplexing and dispatching to the right click listener. You just have to write the click listener, so it makes things a lot easier. Java has lots of frameworks, too. Some of them are very simple, like threads, where you have the threading framework, which we've talked about before, which has all those different callbacks down into the various layers of middleware and the operating system kernel. And then finally, there's a run hook method that gets called that does the actual processing that you define. The executor service, as we've seen, also has a framework where you feed it tasks, and it handles all the underlying threading and queuing and scheduling and dispatching and so on. And then it dispatches a call hook method when it's in the right state to handle the work in a background thread. All Android apps run inside one or more software frameworks. It's actually uh, lots of them. And in fact, as you may recall, there's a frameworks layer in Android. And it has lots of frameworks that handle things like uh, the activity manager stuff and handles notifications, handles the windowing events, handles interaction with the uh, telephony portion of the phone, deals with location management, and so on and so on and so on. There's tons and tons and tons of this stuff. And under the hood, there's a really cool system uh, service manager that keeps track of all these services that are part of the framework layer and make sure they keep running even if they crash and stuff like that. The motivation for doing all this stuff should be pretty clear. It's to enhance systematic reuse. So the idea there is that rather than having to write all this gobbledygook yourself, you can leverage what comes out of the box with something like Android. And obviously, you know, iOS has a similar kind of thing. It's not exactly the same. It uses uh, Objective-C and Swift as opposed to Java, but basically, basically the same idea. The goal here is not to have to reinvent the wheel. OK. Um, Android frameworks are inherently event-driven. And what that means is that the framework waits for events and then calls back the event handlers to do various kinds of things. So the flow of control is driven by the framework. It's keeping track of all the actions that are taking place. The user button click presses on the touch screen. Various sensors, things like the um, you know, accelerometer or the magnometer or the transceivers, messages that come in from other threads, all that stuff is all taken into account by the Android frameworks and it dispatches the callbacks appropriately. This is the typical form of flow control or flow of control between various elements in a framework. I'll focus on Android here, but the concept generalizes. So you have framework code, which would be Android, and you have application code, which is kind of what, what you implement by 
extending or customizing or implementing various abstract classes or super classes or interfaces. And then you plug your stuff into the framework. And when you do that, for example, when you have an activity that you create, it goes ahead and registers for um, one or more events. At that point, the flow of control turns over to the framework. It owns the event loop. It waits for something to happen. At that point, the application code is dormant. When something occurs, like a message shows up, or the user clicks on a, on a button, or some kind of user interface GUI widget, then the event occurs. That is detected by the framework. It will go ahead and call back to the app code, dispatching the appropriate hook methods, such as in the case of the activity, the on create, or on start, or on whatever. You know, There's lots of different things that can get called back. At, this is the time where the application actually does its thing. This is called a hook method because it provides a hook that can be customized by whoever's writing the app. And that's, of course, where application-specific or service-specific or domain-specific code resides. Clearly, the framework doesn't really know what you do here. It just knows that you need to do it at that point. And after the callback is finished, and of course, the callback could itself call lots of other methods. But when that callback, the, the on method, right, the on create, on start, on stop, on receive, whatever. When that thing is done, then control goes back to the framework. So in the case of Android, the Android activity framework, for example, gets control back. And you just keep doing this over and over again until you decide to shut your app down or it gets killed by the, the underlying uh, activity manager service. So that's the basic flow of control of frameworks in general with some specific examples in the context of Android. Does anybody have any questions about what a framework is and why it's beneficial? OK. So by doing things this way, we end up enhancing systematic software reuse. And we can improve other quality attributes, such as modularity, reusability, extensibility, if it's done well, reliability or dependability, because that framework code is amortized over you know, many, 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 many hundreds of thousands or millions of use cases. So Hopefully, over time, you shake out all the bugs and defects in the code, and it becomes very clean and easy to use, or easier to use. OK, so that's just a quick overview of frameworks in general.